but uh, over to Adam to start things up. Yeah, so before we go and dive deep into the the best League One team and tell everyone listening why you know they should all be following, uh, Jason, just give us you know a little bit about yourself, how you got started with the club. And anything else. Yeah. And yeah that's, any, that's anything I'm else you might want to add. For that. He just never quite never had Yeah. <laughs> so, like you said earlier to introduce me, I'm a digital content manager for Ford Madison. And I should preface this by saying that there's actually a team of us. There, there are two of us who work on the online stuff. Me and Kuba Kirchesteniak. Uh, that's an approximation of how you say his name. But he's my boss, so he more oversees the the overall marketing uh, strategy. And then I'm in a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. So almost all of the social media that you see is me. Most of the stuff on the website that you see is for me. Um, and it means that I have a lot of the duties of interacting with fans on a day-to-day -day basis, which is, of course, something uh, for Madison, uh, we probably put into the heart of our digital strategy that you can reach fans online in a way that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Uh, so my background, it's funny because the way you get into this, it's, it's never anything expected. Basically, I, I grew up around Indianapolis and I was in high school when Indy 11 formed. I was a big soccer fan, but I didn't have a local team. So I latched on to Indy 11 and I met the club president, Peter Wilt, uh, who was really fan friendly and I got to know him a little bit. And then when I went to college in Madison, uh, I heard that he was coming here to start Madison Pro Soccer. I reached out and said, hey, Peter, do you remember me? Um, is there anything I can do uh, to help out? So he said, sure, we'll find a way to fit you in. And now, two years later, here I am. Very nice. Um, obviously, Indy 11, a slightly bigger club, but in terms of numbers and obviously a bit history, but um, just to give our listeners a, a brief history of Forward Madison, uh, they were founded on, in May of 2018. They play at Bree Stadium. And, Bree and, Field. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they finished fourth place in their first season. So, yeah. you know, not too shabby for a, a brand new team. Yeah, well, it's, it's a club in a state with a lot of soccer history. Uh, much of that soccer history comes from Milwaukee. You've had teams there since the 19-teens. Uh, some of the oldest continuous soccer clubs in the United States come from Wisconsin. You think of the Milwaukee Bavarians and the uh, Croatian Eagles, who've both been in existence since the 1920s. And Madison as well has had a lot of soccer history. You look back and you look at the university teams here, you look at the Madison 56ers, and of course, Bree Stevens Field, which is built in 1926, originally as a baseball stadium. It hosted NFL games in the 1920s. Jesse Owens ran an exhibition here. Uh, even some Major League Baseball teams played exhibition games at Bree Stevens Field, and it's cool to feel like now we're embedded in that history, and we've been able to take a little bit of it and apply it to what we're doing in the present. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, definitely one of my goals is to get out there for a match once sports resume and everything's <laughs> normal with the world again. It's a good goal for everybody. Yeah, I mean, the matches I have, are... I, have, well, I was going to say, I have my list of you know, I want to visit every MLS stadium and a few others. Forward mm -hmm. Madison is before, I'm pretty sure. I'd probably say outside of five MLS stadiums, I think that's probably one of the top ones I need to get to. Like, I can I can skip over going to Soldier Field if it means I get to go to, to Bree <laughs> Stadium. Look, obviously, I'm subjective here, but I've been to MLS games at a whole bunch of stadiums. I've been to, I want to say, like, four different MLS 
game stadiums and the atmosphere didn't even approach uh what we have in madison of course these weren't like you know the the teams of 40,000 50,000 people i'll give you that but still it's it's a really special place the the stands are like right on top of the field the fans are going crazy the whole game it's it's the place to be yeah there's I, something there's something to be said about a, a small small field small stadium atmosphere that just kind of you know trumps these huge stadiums with nobody in them yeah yeah i i fully agree um i mean speaking on me and andrew's behalf as red bull fans we've been to games where yes you'll have you know two three four sections of fans cheering the whole game and that atmosphere is great but the rest of the stadium is quiet on their phone and just kind of there like yes the numbers may look impressive but as far as atmosphere i'd rather have you know a forward madison where everybody's cheering everybody's involved in that atmosphere than these big stadiums where half people could be not bothered with what's actually going on in the field adam are you saying you'd rather go to forward madison games than vancouver at home on a wednesday I mean, absolutely. <laughs> you're mental. Uh, no, that you're, I agree because right, we we show up and we get into. We were in the South Ward for that game, and it was insane. Yeah, but then, yeah, if you when you left to go get like a hot dog or something, because that was dollar hot dog night, and it was like it was dead. And you, like you you walk around and it's dead everywhere else. And and again, it's 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 nice if you have like in Atlanta where you have seventy thousand people and they're all into it. But if you have a team that's kind of in the middle of, you know, having a, a quarter of their fans being really into it and the other three quarters is kind of like, I'm here, it's whatever, it's not the same. Well, I mean, there's a depth and breadth of soccer culture in the United States, and it's been a lot of fun to watch it grow personally over the past decade or so even. Uh, the number, not just the number of teams that have come into existence, but uh, the supporters groups and the culture they adopt and how each one can play off the back of each other and create something unique in so many different places. And it really gives us something to look forward to once uh, we get out of our homes eventually.